The bout between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield has been called the fight of the decade. It's the most unbelievable thing I've ever been privileged to witness. It was one filled with strategies and counter strategies. When he dip, he gonna, he gonna throw that left hook. What tactics did the two fighters try to employ? Work that body. Work his body. Work the tires work his body. Don't headhunt. Don't headhunt. How did Holyfield withstand Tyson's formidable power? I never dreamed he was that good of a fighter. He's not moving Holyfield back. What patterns were exposed and mistakes exploited? When you throw the jab, you offset anything that he does. Everything at the jab. Throw the jab and spin back and down the pipe. He's not starting to square up on you now. The inside story next on Tyson versus Holyfield. The fight analysis. Showtime Championship Boxing Report presents Tyson versus Holyfield, the final analysis. The date, November 9th. The scene, the arena at the MGM Grand. And the most eagerly awaited heavyweight fight in years was about to begin. The odds had closed at 7-1, to one, and not many in the star-studded audience believed that Holyfield could withstand the ferocity of Tyson's attack. And in the moments before the opening bell, the excitement, the tension, the sense of anticipation seemed almost palpable. Gentlemen, this will be a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves, let's go. Unlike other Tyson opponents, Holyfield appeared confident and anxious to get it on. Every fighter that studies the tape of another fighter has a preconceived notion of how the fight's going to start and unfold. In this case, Evander Holyfield knew Mike Tyson being short and squat, rushes at his opponents to get inside early, and he dips to one side or the other, usually his left side, which indicates he's going to hit you with a left hook or a left uppercut. Mike always dips to his left. And, you know, usually when he dips to his left, his opponent covers up. I say, as soon as he dips, you punch. You shovel the right hand right on him, you're going to catch him. As expected, Mike Tyson comes out fast. He didn't surprise me with the attack. He surprised me with the first punch he threw, and meaning that he dipped. And I was looking for the left foot. He threw the right hand. <laughs> I, you know, I was surprised about that. He hit Holyfield in the first round with a, with a back-breaking, uh, jaw-cracking right hand. Usually, it's over. You know what I mean? Holyfield stayed. His knees wobbled. I thought he had two chances, Slim and none. And I thought Slim was out of time, but he came back. Holyfield comes back with a left hook. Holyfield with a combination to Tyson's head. He just took advantage of all my mistakes. I was throwing my punches halfway, and um, he would beat me to the punch by extending his punch. And then come forward, and the punch would be here, and he counted me. He was just through. Had real fast counter punches, his first class counter puncher, and it was awesome. E Evander has impressed me an awful lot this round. He's put order, he's put the kind of fight he wants. We know what Evander's done. He's kept his defense tight well, and he's fired back. Work, 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 he's work, gotten some respect. Back. He's not moving Holyfield. He's not moving Holyfield back as we head for the bell. They continue to go after the bell. I want to know right then and there, you know, that's rules and regulation. If you hit me this way, then, then I'm going to hit you back. Then we can do this all night. No intimidation factor here whatsoever. The Tyson mystique not having any hold on Evander Holyfield. Evander is fighting the fight, but what he's doing is kind of smart. He's trying to smother Mike by actually getting too close to him, a la Buster Mathis, and, he, and hold on once he gets inside. On my mind at that time was to keep Mike going backwards and see could he adjust going backwards. And as much as I came forward, he wouldn't do anything but go backward to the referee break. And once the referee break, then he would try to come forward. Then I have to get him to go backwards again. 
He can't fight going backwards. Never could. His whole thing is going forward and destroying you. If he keep his left foot in front of Tyson, in the middle of Tyson's stance, all he has to do is push off on his right foot and Tyson will move back. You saw how he was walking Tyson back all night. He took me off guard by holding me. He caught me off guard. That was a good game plan. I, you know, you got to admire that. He, he fought a good fight. Tyson against the ropes. A combination by Holyfield to the head of Tyson. I did hit Mike with some clean shots. And, and he was able to take it. And, and it was a proven point to me at that time that, you know, I can take a good shot, too. Up until the fifth round, to the surprise of most observers, Holyfield had been controlling the tempo of the fight and was ahead on most scorecards. Straight left hand there by, by Tyson, but a glancing blow. Back comes Holyfield. They got him in his attention, and good. He got a little careless in the fifth round. I don't know, Tyson came to life a little bit in the fifth round. He caught him with a major league shot. Things were going Mike way at that time, and he was throwing good shots, but they wasn't hurt me at the time, but they was connecting. That hurt. Uh, if ever he has a chance, he has a chance right now. Vander's hurt. The logic of going to any fighter's body, there's an old saying, kill the body and the head will die. Vander Holyfield also has a 30-inch waist. He has a small body. So he doesn't have a big, durable body, as do some of the other fighters. When he worked the body, with the right hand of the body under Vander's jab, and then ripped up, you could see Vander Holyfield was physically aching by those body shots. They hurt. I'm doing some good things there, but you know, I'm consistent in doing them. You know what I mean? I threw a couple points, I stopped, and they counted me, bop, bop. I started counting me, bop, bop. Tyson unleashing uppercuts to the body, digging to the chin. Hitting with a good body shot, Prince. Like that, then the uppercut right behind it, and like that, but, which wasn't clean, but, but you can see that he was taking more chances in that fifth round to try to get me out, which I ain't just had to water that storm. Still, Evander's taking a hell of a shot. He's taking one heck of a shot here. You know, the whole thing is that being able to weather the storm, then let him look in my eye and and hope that he see that he hadn't done anything. And then that kills a person's confidence, especially when they've known for knocking people out. I really thought I was just go over there and just obliviate him quickly. I didn't have no game plan. Because I was just anticipating a big punch and a knockout. Great, great, great. Come on. Get back, get back, get back. Let him out, Mike. Let him out. So, inside, work that body. Work those little ribs. And get to his side. Don't stay in front of him. Don't lay in front of this guy. Everything he does is right in front of him. Get you to his side. Body, Mike. Bring it right up to the head. Body the head. Body the head. Body the head. And get a rhythm to what you're doing. You got to throw three or four punches at a time, baby. Off the jab. Mm -hmm. Everything off the jab. When you yeah. throw the jab, you offset yeah. anything that he does. Throw the jab and straight right hand down the pipe. This guy's starting to square up on you now. Round number six. Round five was a good one for Tyson. The crowd a little quieter as a result. That's a big left hook. Evander's legs not really buckled, but they caved in just a just a pinch. That was a big left hook. Now what? Mitch Halpern again calls time. Accidental headbutt. That's when Mike first went in uh, when the headbutt. He said was cutting it, tucking to the corner, and I'm um, I'm looking pretty much his attitude and. He come back and he now it's almost like he said I'm mad I got a headbutt and I'm mad so now that I know that this man is mad he's finna give his all all I have to do is be better than that and he's so mad that he wants to take over this fight and, and finish it the chance of Holyfield with the crowd sensing that Holyfield might have Tyson in trouble because of the cut. Ooh, oh. a low blow by Holyfield. That was a low blow to Mike. And Holyfield it, hit him real low. And it hurt him. Mike's face crinkled when he got hit. He grimaced. Holyfield turned on by the crowd. Less than a minute in round six. Holyfield's closing this round like a champion, like the overachieving warrior oh. that he is. Oh, down goes Tyson. A left hook. 
I throw a gut body shot, but I was trying to hit him on the chin, and I missed his chin. And I hit him directly in the chest. And, you know, and it was just so much force on that shot. Lift him off his feet. Mike was caught squared up and was hit square in the chest. And anytime you're squared up, you're off balance as far as a boxing stance is concerned. What Don Turner means by squaring up is that Mike Tyson no longer has one foot behind the other in a good strong stance. His feet are side by side and therefore squared up. He has less leverage because his feet are together now. He's much more easily moved. His body and his shoulders are also part of that and they're squared up and now a bigger target. It was shocking to see him sitting down on the floor. You know, I hadn't seen that since 91 when uh, he was fighting Buster Douglas, or 90, whenever he fought Buster Douglas. And uh, the anxiety with me began to mount my geometric progression. Tyson down for only the second time in his career. Buster Douglas did it the first time. And you know what happened there? Well, this is what we came to see. How can he do? How is he going to uh, do when he gets down? That's what we're going to see now. We are seeing Mike Tyson tested. Oh, I didn't think he would finish him off. Tyson is not easy to hit as people think he is. He's a little savvy and he's so quick with his herky-jerky moves. He's a good fight. They continue to battle after the bell. I sit in the corner and I kind of glanced at him over there and, and I, I can see that I'm getting a little bit by a little bit. You know, it's, it's a full, it's a 12 round fight, but that that, that round that kind of took a little starch on it. How about scores, guys? I got him ahead, 58-56, Evander Holyfield. And I have the fight even. I have the fight three, two, and one even, but the knockdown makes it even. Set time. I'm not going to warn you, kid. When I say break, you step back. You understand me? Let's go. Come on. There was a lot of holding throughout the fight. I, mean, I had to warn him. I had to push him back a couple times. I think... Once or twice in the fight, I had to call time and bring them together and tell them, you know, hey, I'm not messing around in here. Next time you're going to lose a point. And that's, that's all you need to do. You need to give them a stern warning, let them know, you, you know, you're the boss in there. Come on. Come at him. Come on. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let him go when I say break. You understand me? Let him go. Evander's fighting the smartest fight he's ever fought. He's not standing like he did with Bo. He knows it's a different fighter, a different fight, different situation, and what needs to be done. Why do people abandon their game plan because of the opposition? I feel that each and every time he swung, he was trying to get me out of there. I began to do a pantomime, throwing right hands and, and looking forth, you know, uh, for the knockout blow to come, you know what I mean? But it wasn't that. It was in a distant, far place. Okay. Oh, oh, Look out now as they come together. Again, the headbutt. That one buckled. That one buckled Tyson. Tyson. I mean, Tyson actually got a headbutt and hurt. It's the second time of the fight. That's another accidental headbutt. This is part of the game. I'm putting my head in as well. You know what I mean, hopefully he gets hit with a head and may cut himself or bump himself. But um, it's just as much my fault as his. Well, Mike is getting to that little level where he might need a knockout. I have a vendor ahead by so much that it's getting to the point where he, either he gets a knockout or he's going to win this fight. A right hook followed by a left by Holyfield and countering with a combination is Mike Tyson. That left hook, which is usually lethal, being guarded beautifully by Holyfield. I just kept fighting, hoping that something may happen. I know I wasn't in good condition, but I knew um, anything that happened in my situation. Now I may catch him with a good shot in the 10th or 11th round, something may happen. Usually when I hit Mike with a couple of shots, Mike will hold and keep me from throwing the next one distant. But in the 10th round, he, he no longer did that. He, he no longer embraced and held like that to, to change the pace of the fight. He just fought with me that way. And so I knew that this fight is in my hand now. Straight right combination by Holyfield. Holyfield looking to air it out. Holyfield's unloading. Now he's taking a shot. He's going for it. Oh, Tyson's in trouble. Holyfield smothers Tyson. Looking to put Tyson down and end the fight. Tyson is now in trouble. He's saved by the bell. Mike is out on his feet. 
Holyfield really hurt him with a shot on the temple. Knocked him across the ring. And I actually thought that the referee was going to stop the fight in the 10th round. If, if, he, if Tyson hadn't have been the champion, I think he would have stopped it. At the end of the 10th round, I, I was close. I took a good look at Tyson. I, um, you know, I felt that he could continue. It's always the other side. Are we going to say this fight should have been stopped later or later? But the fight was stopped, and the fight needed to be stopped. When he stood up, I could look in his eyes and knew that he was out. And when he came out, I knew the first thing Mike was going to do and throw the big right hand. I got out there, first thing he threw, right hand. We clinched. But I knew that when I pushed Mike back, if you look at his leg, his leg was wobbly. It was almost like, you know, I hit him with a shot, and I just only pushed him. He didn't have the leg. I knew all I had to do was jab him and step back from him and get him to come forward on the on, 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 on wobbly leg. And when he did, I was able to hit him with the right hand. And from that point on, was that, you know, in the shot. Holyfield continues to dig in. A left hook to the head. He's got Tyson in trouble. Tyson's ready to go. A straight right hand. The Talbert stops the fight. And Holyfield has won. I can't believe what I'm saying. It's the most unbelievable thing I've ever been privileged to witness. Mayhem. It is Bedlam. I don't remember what I was doing, but I know he was hitting me with some good shots. I don't even remember feeling the shots, but I know I could hear him though. Or if I could hear him, boop, 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 boop. It's going to be disappointment, but you just, just have to continue to be um, consistent and persistent and just um, continue to endure. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. 37 seconds in round number 11. Our referee in charge, Mitch Halpern, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout in a stunning upset. The new WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Evander, the real deal, holy fear. I paid the price, and I thank God, and here I am. I'm like, you know, I'm the heavyweight champ of the world again. And all the people who thought I wouldn't be, you know, now they surprised. This is probably my finest hour. And it happened at a time when nobody believed me. And as you know, you talked to me, I told you it was going to happen all along. And I knew it was going to happen because I had a guy that wasn't afraid. And it's going to happen again. He said, I let you down. I said, no, you didn't, Mike. You didn't let me down. I said, you're a giant, brother. I said, you're, you're great. I said, we'll we're, we're, we're do it again. I said, but you know, you didn't let me down. You made me very, very proud of you. Like I said earlier, really, I don't take this stuff serious to the extent where I go crazy. It's just part of my life, and that didn't go well one particular night. Evander Holyfield took the possible out of the impossible. He made the unbelievable the believable. The sound rocketed from Russia and Moscow uh, to Taipan, uh, to Japan, to South Africa, to the Middle East, to Israel, you know what I mean, to America. All of them saying, when will it happen? How will it happen? What will happen? All these questions will be answered with the sound and the fury Holyfield and Tyson rematch. Well, trust me, I, I, my, my belief and theory in life is to destroy or be destroyed. And I'm looking forward to destroy. And I look forward to this next fight. And, and I don't look for the Tyson that I fall. November 9th, hope November 9th is gone. I just love to see the best, better man that particular night. Um, I'm going to win the title for a third time. and. Um, I just, we had a bad night, but I'm the best fighter in the world. One more. One more. To be the best fighter in the world, one must prove it in the ring. The strategies continue. The counter strategies continue. Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, the two greatest heavyweights of a generation. The saga continues Saturday, June 28th.